In Matthew 24, 3, the disciples come to Jesus and ask, what will be the sign of your coming and the end of this age? In order for us to understand what is the coming of Jesus, we must first understand what is an age. We know very well what how man defines what an age is. A man says, here's the earth. Here's the beginning or the creation, and this earth must at some point be destroyed, and this will be the end of the age. This is what the carnal mind knows, and this is what man has debated for centuries and still debates today. We need to look at what God says is an age. What does Jesus have to say about what an age is and get these ideas of the uh, what an age is of the carnal mind out of our system so we can uh, hear the voice of God. And the answer is in Matthew 13. In Matthew 13, um, Jesus says there is one, there is a field, and there's one who sows good seed on this field. And as men slept, the enemy comes and sows bad seed or tares. Now, this good seed uh, sprouts and produces a fruit. The bad seed also produces a fruit. Now, the man's servants come and they see the tares or the bad seed and they say, where did these tares come from? Didn't you only sow good seed? And the man says, yes, I sowed good seed only, but... This is the work of the enemy. So the servants ask, do you want us to go and gather the bad seed? The man says, no, lest while you gather the bad seed, you also uproot the good seed. Wait until the harvest, then I'll send my reapers who will come in and gather the bad seed and throw it into the furnace of fire where only the good seed will remain. Now, later on, the disciples came and asked Jesus, explain to us what this parable means. Jesus says, the good seed is sowed by the Son of Man. And the bad seed is sowed by the devil. And the bad seed are the sons of the wicked. And the good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. And here's where he defines what an age is. He says, the harvest will bring forth the end of the age. Now we're going to come back and look at what exactly this harvest is. But earlier on in Matthew 13, in the first parable in Matthew 13, the parable of the sower, Jesus says what this field is. This field is man's heart this is the heart so now that we understand this is all happening inside of man's heart we can look at this harvest and understand what this harvest is all about if we go to matthew uh, 13 uh 41 says the son of man will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness and will cast them into the furnace of fire there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father he who has ears to hear let him hear okay here's what he's saying All of this bad seed that has been growing and growing and growing and has been forming kingdoms and nations within the heart and has been uh, killing the good seed. Man's hope is for God to come in and cast out all of this bad seed, this work of the devil into the fire and when this takes place what is the end result this is the end of the age when only good seed
remains in the heart. And this is when the righteous will shine forth like the sun. These are Jesus' words. Right? This is righteousness. When all of the work of the enemy is uprooted, this is the coming of Jesus. Jesus comes into the heart to destroy every work of the devil, which has been uh, crucifying Jesus and crucifying that good seed, which is unable to grow in the heart. Now, Jesus doesn't introduce this concept of a good seed versus the bad seed. In fact, Jesus hardly doesn't really introduce new concepts. He only uh, clarifies, expounds, and reveals the mystery that's the Old Testament. The good seed and the bad seed are found in the Garden of Eden. God commanded uh, Adam and Eve not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and to only eat the tree of life. The bad seed is the knowledge of good and evil, and the good seed is the tree of life. See, God is saying, uh, stop eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Stop trying to decide for yourself what is good, what is evil. Stop relying on your own wisdom. Your own wisdom will only bring forth destruction and death. Only choose life. Only choose Jesus. And that will bring forth life. And that is what is good. That is the only good there is. So we see that the good seed brings forth life. And the bad seed is the knowledge of good and evil and see that once we start understanding what jesus is saying through the lens of the spirit then the whole bible starts making sense because the old testament is full of nothing but destruction in fact god basically damns every single nation on earth besides israel why is that the case well, this is another lesson for another day, but we'll ultimately see that the Israel represents man's soul. And the damnation of every single other nation that's not Israel represents God destroying the work of man so that the righteous can shine forth. God is destroying the works of the lawless ones inside man's heart which have been persecuting the good seed from day one. The Old Testament shows us what is the kingdom of man. Remember when Jesus came forth, the only thing he would uh, say over and over and over again is the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is at hand. And us Christians have lost this message today because we don't understand it. The kingdom of heaven is is at hand what he's saying is this entire time the kingdom of man has been working inside you you have been sitting on the throne and making decisions for yourself as if you are god that's what the old testament is about is showing the kingdom of man brings nothing but destruction the only hope for man is for man to be dethroned for the devil which is man's wisdom to be cast out from the throne of God so that Jesus can come in, take over this throne, and cast out all of the wickedness which is in man's heart. This is the kingdom of God. This is the kingdom of God man on the left side and this is the law the law that paul says only brings forth a curse and this is god's grace 
This is day one through six. And this is day seven, the Sabbath. This, this here is where you will attain rest for your souls. Because remember, God told Adam and Eve right after they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he said, you're always going to be in turmoil. You're going to be in a state of toiling. Your heart is always going to be working. You're always fighting. All, that good seed doesn't have a chance of bringing forth good seed because that bad seed is always uh, at work and not allowing the good seed to prosper. So that's why we have to enter into God's rest, which is the Sabbath, which is righteousness. This is the judgment of God destroying the evil work of man. And uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 24 puts this beautifully. Uh, 15, 24 through 25. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after you're destroying every rule and every authority and every power. This is exactly the picture that we've been describing. The power, the authority of Satan, which man has been operating under. The only righteousness is for God to destroy the works of man, which is what he says in 1 Corinthians 3.13. Each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it. What's the day? The day of the Lord, the coming of Jesus, which is what the Old Testament prophesies over and over again, because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work, which has been built on it, endures, he will receive a reward. But if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved. So again, we see that um, this is man's works. Um, the ma man's works has to be cast into the fire. That is salvation. See, this is salvation. When the righteous seed, the righteous fruit can bear bear fruit. And there's only righteous seed. The, the bad seed has been cast out. Galatians 4, uh, verses four, chapter 4, verse 4. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent for it his son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who are under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. This is um, adoption uh, of a son. This here is being a servant. You're a slave to sin. This is the law of sin and death. This is the law of the Spirit in Christ Jesus. This is what Romans 7 and uh, uh, chapter 7 and 8 and even chapter 6 talk about um, the, the law of, the, of sin and death versus the law of Spirit. See, the law of Spirit is complete freedom. And the law of sin and death is nothing but bondage. Now that we understand what Jesus is telling us in Matthew 13, we can go back and understand what John the Baptist was saying in Matthew 3. Because remember when John the Baptist first came onto the scene in Matthew, he was saying the same exact thing. His message was Matthew 3.10. And even now the ax is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Same exact message that we've been talking about. I indeed baptize you with water, but he is coming after me who is mightier than me, who is going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. 
This is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the fire is the fire that burns the work of man. And every seed that is not from God, anything that's not Jesus, this is the baptism of uh, the Holy Spirit, which brings complete freedom. Now that we have an understanding of what God says at ages, let's turn and see what God has to say about the coming of Jesus and what exactly that is. James 5, 7 says, Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. All right, well, this is clear. It's saying, just as the farmer is patiently waiting for the rain, so you should wait patiently for the coming of the Lord. We read about Jesus coming on the clouds, right? What do the clouds produce? Rain. So Jesus is coming on the clouds to give rain, to bring forth rain. Now, what is this rain? Hosea 10, 12 tells us, For it is time to seek the Lord till He comes and rains righteousness on you. Righteousness. Jesus is coming on the clouds so that He can bring forth the rain of righteousness, which produces the uh, the fire of God, the hail of God, which is going to destroy all of the wickedness of man's heart. Now, Jesus says, before the Son of Man comes, there must be great tribulation. So what is this tribulation? Well, if you remember in uh, Matthew 7, 14, we read, Narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life and few find it. This word difficult, the Greek word is actually thlibo, which is the root word for tribulation. So it should read, Narrow is the gate and tribulation is the way which leads to life. So, this gate here I'm going to make it a round gate. This is the gate of tribulation. Now, if you remember, Jesus says it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. See, nothing Jesus says is isolated. Everything is connected. What is the eye of the needle? The eye of the needle is the size of the gate. See, a camel is so much larger than the eye of a needle. Yet a rich man, one who is rich in his own wisdom, one who is rich in in his own thoughts. This man is infinitely greater than a camel in terms of the, the size of the gate. He has no chance of entering in through that tiny hole because his ego is far, far too large. He has no chance of entering. So the entire point of tribulation is to crush and destroy the ego and the wisdom of man so that he is smaller than the eye of a needle and can enter in through the gate, through the doors that lead to righteousness. This is what tribulation is all about. Now, if we, we, we read in Genesis uh, 3, 7 that as soon as Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, their eyes were open. So... Let's draw this again. We have the bad seed, which is the knowledge of good and evil we already identified. As soon as they ate um, from that tree, their eyes were opened. 
What does it mean for your eyes to be open? They're carnal eyes, the carnal heart. It gave forth. How can how can you see? There must first be light, right? So a light went off. This is the light that went off after they ate from that tree. And they started to walk under this light. Now, Matthew 24 tells us that the tribulation is going to bring forth uh, a complete darkness. The sun is going to go completely black. And the moon is going to turn red before we will see the Son of Man. What does that mean? What Jesus is telling us is this bad seat, which has brought forth this light, which is the wisdom of man. Until this wisdom of man goes black and dies, man can never know who God is because our wisdom is always getting in the way of God. The, our wisdom has been the adversary of God from the beginning. Do you know what Lucifer means? Lucifer is one that brings forth light. This is the wisdom of man. When Adam and Eve ate from that tree in the garden, that light went off. Lucifer came on and man started to walk according to his wisdom. And that wisdom has led to nothing but utter destruction and death inside of man. It's the uh, kingdoms that man has formed, which ultimately uh, they come. It, the kingdoms must at some point be turned upside down when someone arrives at a, a point in their life when everything that they thought is to is true and the the very way that they live their life based on a certain ideology or a certain wisdom when that wisdom is turned upside down then man is left with nothing man doesn't know who he is and the only thing man can do at that point in time is either choose god and say god save me i don't know who i am i know nothing or to continue in his folly and choose death this is the great tribulation. This is the light that must go off. But it's a beautiful thing when this light goes off because when this light goes black, then man finally realizes that I cannot eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because it has led to nothing but destruction my whole life, just as God predicted from Genesis. Now, what happens after that sun goes black? The moon turns Red, the moon must die. Who's the moon? The moon doesn't produce any light. The moon reflects the light of the sun. The moon is the man of sin. It's the natural man who has been living under the auspices of the sun and who has been uh, following under the footsteps of the sun, which is man's wisdom. Second Thessalonians uh, 2 Thessalonians 2.3 says, Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or is that worship, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. See, this is the, the moon is the man of sin who has received all of his instruction from the sun the sun must go black and the man of sin the moon goes red the man of sin must die this is when man is left with nothing this is when your flesh is crucified this is what the cross is all about this is when you will finally see the son of man coming in great glory riding on the clouds to bring forth the reign of righteousness, destroying the evil seeds that have been uh, controlling you your whole life. And this is when the kingdom of God will come upon you and you will be baptized with fire. 
See, until our wisdom goes completely black, we will never see the coming of Jesus because as long as that wisdom, that Lucifer, that light is turned on, that means we are sitting in the throne of God. So the only way God can come is if we decide to get off that throne. And that's when the sun goes black and the moon dies. That's why this order cannot be reversed. It's always tribulation first, which leads to blackness and then the Son of Man will appear in great glory. This is the work of God. Once we grasp this message in our spirit, then the entire Bible will start making sense. We can make sense of the Old Testament. We can make sense of Revelation. We can make sense of verses such as Luke 17, 21, uh, that for the kingdom of God is within you. Matthew 16, 28, uh, truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. See, these are verses that religion cannot make sense of because religion tries to uh, use man's wisdom and understanding God, which we can never understand God through our own wisdom. God is telling us this wisdom must die so we can see Him through the spiritual eyes. God is an all-consuming fire. Before you enter inside the tabernacle, you must go through the altar. The flesh must be completely burned so that we can commune with God in the Spirit. We can now make sense of the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, God said, or Jesus said, uh, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, right? Well, now we know exactly what it, he's talking about. Blessed are you when you are poor in spirit, when you become small so that you can enter in through the gate which leads to righteousness because the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted, right? Same same thing. Blessed are the um, meek, for they shall inherit the earth. What's the earth? We've already identified the earth is the heart. The Bible talks endlessly about the heavens and the earth, the heavens and the earth, the heavens and the earth. The heavens are what is controlling man. Who is sitting on the throne? Is it Satan or God? And the earth is man's heart. What is controlling man's heart? Satan or um, God? Just as the earth revolves around the sun, so does the natural man revolve around uh, Satan or man's wisdom. That is the old heaven and the old earth which must be destroyed so that the new heaven and the new earth can be ushered in. And this is the new Jerusalem. This is Zion. This is from God himself. There's no corruption uh, in on this holy hill. Okay, this is Zion. And this is all attained while we are here in this lifetime. Let's conclude by putting all of this together. Galatians 1, 4 says, Who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil age. We see that we must be delivered from the present evil age and an age has nothing to do with the age of the earth or when the earth began or when the earth will end. This is not what God is saying. This is the message of man. Man wants to argue how old is the earth? When was it created? When will the earth end? While Jesus is talking about the heart the whole time Jesus is saying right now if you haven't seen this coming of the Son of Man in your heart there's a present evil age in your heart which is ruling over inside of you and this evil age must come to an end so that my throne of righteousness can reign for all of eternity inside of you this is what an age is and this is the coming of the Lord. Ever since we ate from that tree in the Garden of Eden, and this is happening inside of us, we're all choosing 
uh, the knowledge of good and evil because this is the light that we see but this light must be turned off this light must go dark it must go black and this only comes about through great tribulation when god crushes and destroys our wisdom so that we cry out for a savior so he comes and delivers us from that prior evil age and we enter into a new age which is nothing but the fruits of the spirit love joy peace righteousness this is good news this is the gospel 